Okay, I'm back and I have glued the port nacelle in place and gone ahead and placed the magnet wire within the trench, secured it with some CA glue. Now be careful it doesn't get too thick because it can bump up and affect the way this thing sits. I don't think I'll have a problem there, but I did have to file some CA glue right there. And obviously you have to be careful you don't damage the wire. Now, these photo etch parts are a little longer than you need. I, I went ahead and, and slipped this under the, uh, the wire and fitted it in position. Let me see if I can do it again for you guys here and I'll show you what I mean. This slides right on in and you can push it in and glue it in position but even if you slide it as far as you can I've gone pretty far and, and glued it as much as possible. Here's the problem. This thing overlaps right here. See that? Now, you can't have an overlap because when this part sits here, it's going to be a problem. So, I'm going to have to cut some of the photo etch part from this side, including the tab. And that's okay, because that's going to hide inside the insertion point of the pylon into the nacelle. Once I glue all this together, it's not even going to be noticeable. You can't see it. So, little pitfall to watch out for. So I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll be careful not to cut off too much in case I need some length still. I'll start off with a relatively small piece and see how that looks. Okay, that's better, but it's still overlapping some. As you can see. So, I'll cut off just a little bit more. And I'd rather go in pieces and take off too little than take too much and then have this thing be too short. Of course, this area is easily hidden because it's underneath the nacelle, but still, you know, you want to try and get things done as best you can. Ideally, if you want to, if you can slide this in here, it's better. So it'll cover up all the wire but you can go ahead and just notch it in there since this is all going to be glued with CA glue anyway and it looks like we're just about there Let's see if I can get this sucker to go into space just a tad and sure enough that's good enough right there So that's how that thing's going to sit. So my next step will be to primer it with some metal primer, which I happen to get some. If I can find the can in this mess here. Just picked it up the other day at the local hobby shop. It's a metal primer. It'll allow this to keep the paint a little easier, or at least that's the theory. That's what I'm hoping because the photo etch parts on the Bates Mansion were a pain to paint. Paint was, would not stay on them very nicely. Anyway, once I primer it, I'll put it in position and I'll glue it with the CA glue underneath and uh, repeat on the other side. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> once I'm done with that side, then this will all get painted in the hull color. And uh, that part will be done and then on to the photons and the 
phaser array photons first. I have to figure out how I'm going to get them to exit through the back and the front. There's no spaces. But anyway, that's uh, that's how I glue the uh, photo etch parts on. Okay. Okay, I'm back, and I found the metal primer. This is some Tamiya metal primer, which I found at a local hobby shop. Uh, I had heard and read that uh, priming the metal was better. It might actually help with the painting, so I'm going to give it a shot. I'll try it here for the first time. And it says metal primer for undercoating metal parts. And it's distributed by Tamiya. So here goes nothing. Okay. Well, don't see much of a difference, but I guess you wouldn't. Turn on the span. I guess I'll have to let them dry before I do anything else. But um, hopefully that'll allow me to paint them a little easier. And uh, we'll see. Okay. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay. Just thought I'd show you uh, my progress on the uh, trench covers. I've got the port cover glued in place. I had a little trouble with the tab here. I wasn't happy with uh, how it came out. It, I wanted it to be more flush with this edge, but I guess I pushed it in too much and glued it in place, so that's how it's going to have to be. This tab I cut off. I've been trying to sand it down so it's right along the edge. It's hard though because it's all stuck in there, so I'm going to have to hide it with the paint and the decals and make sure that uh, it's not seen. I've got the uh, wires all glued in in the starboard side and I'm getting set to put the uh, trench cover on that side as well. I'll be trimming it so it it looks just like the one on the port side. Obviously I want to try and make them as uh, even as possible and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that. This has been kind of tricky. All right, see you soon. Hey guys, Armando here, I'm back. And uh, let me get you all caught up on what I've done, which has been quite a bit since the last video. I've also run into some problems and I wanna show you what the problems are and what I've done so far to fix them. I'm not finished fixing them, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, when last, uh, on the last segment we left off on the uh, trench covers, which were just placed. Well, I've painted those, and I must say this uh, Tamiya metal primer is fantastic stuff. The uh, quality of how the paint sticks to the photo etch part is much better than what my, my experience was with the Bates Mansion photo etch parts, which were not primered at all, so I highly recommend this. Now, it looks fairly decent, but uh, I'm disappointed that it did not stick flush with the uh, model to hide better the detail, especially here on the forward portions. I suppose I could try and fix some of that with putty and I'll see what I can do. Maybe it won't be so noticeable once the decals are in place, but anyway, um, I painted that and it looks good. I uh, went ahead and um, painted the whole area in the same color as a hole. And then I proceeded to do a few things and one of the things, things I noticed and I've been watching TNG episodes with my son over the last couple of days. Today I watched the game, a season 5 episode, and yesterday or the day before I watched Disaster. And One of the consistent things throughout the show, which I've discussed in Hangouts in the past with Chris, with Chris Whitford and other people, is, is the total lack of consistency of the model that's seen on screen. In today's episode, I saw at least three versions of the model. Uh, in one version, the, the highly detailed saucer version, 
Oops, sorry, that's my uh, photon board. I'll show that to you in a second. It tends to fire off uh, on the power source. It's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, on today's episode, I saw about three different variations. In one, the saucer has strobes, which are navigation lights in the center that blink. In another version, they do not. In one of the versions, as the saucer, the uh, nacelles go away, the, the ship goes away, there's strobes here and here and here and here which are white blinking navigation lights in other versions uh, that I saw on screen today they do not which kinda pisses me off because I would have put navigation lights in here I would have liked to have had them but because the model didn't have the provisions for it I didn't think of it at the time and I went ahead and sealed up the nacelles so now I'm left with the frustration of no navigation lights in the nacelles and really there's no way that I can see that I could insert them in there in LEDs without taking the whole thing apart and I'm not willing to do that so I guess this model is not going to have navigation lights on the nacelles but I will certainly add them to the saucers the other thing I did was drill what essentially became trenches um, in here to insert the uh, fiber optics for the two lights that are seen on a lot of the models green and red um, Boyd did a good job on his with that and I wanted to do that but uh, one thing that I'd heard about and that I hadn't had too much experience with but I certainly did have experience with it here is the fact that these Dremel bits no matter how slow you run them the drills they will melt practice so they, they will melt plastic so uh, this essentially became two trenches uh, and boy did I have to remove um, melted plastic I tell you. Uh, I did, I made sure that the fiber optics fit through and then I puttied it over and that needs to be sanded of course. Uh, I puttied it over last night and I haven't worked on it today. The fiber optics are bloomed and uh, I will be testing them. Uh, they will have a red and a green LED attached to them in here and uh, I think they'll look pretty cool once uh, once they're appropriately placed. Uh, I also went ahead and drilled out the photon torpedo outlets and put uh, one millimeter fiber optics and bloomed them. That's the forward uh, photon torpedo and uh, the aft photon torpedo has also been drilled and bloomed and the LED will be placed there, red LEDs. Now the red LEDs, I've wired them into the photon torpedo board which is the one you were hearing a few seconds ago, Ralph's board and uh, I already went ahead and drilled holes into the LEDs so they'll they're ready for wiring into the here's one they're ready to uh, to have the fiber optics glued into them uh, but I thought I'd show you the effect this is pretty funny uh, and actually pretty cool turn on the power supply okay I think it's shorting out that's why it's doing it spontaneously it's not supposed to unless you hit the momentary switch but uh, I think that just has to do with the uh, the clamps that I placed it on. Anyway, when you hit the momentary switch, and let me just show you if I can. I took this thing off the tripod. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that because now I need a third hand. Okay. Let's see here. I'll just insert this here. Pull back the fiber optic. And now, how do I hit the button? Okay. Let's do it like this. Pretty cool. I think uh, once all that is uh, installed, it's going to look incredible. Uh, I'm very happy with that. 
Tonight I thought I'd work on either sanding out those trenches and making them smooth again. I'm not too worried about the phaser strips uh, or are those transporter emitter strips. I'm not sure which one. I think they're phaser strips because I have the photo etch parts and they'll go over them. Um, so tonight I'll either sand this down or I'll go ahead and wire the navigation board from Ralph's uh, boards that I bought and test out the uh, replacement uh, phaser array board. He assures me I can place 26 LEDs instead of the 13 if I want to so I can do both the upper and lower saucer uh, phaser strips simply because I like to complicate my life as much as possible. I haven't made a final decision on that yet but uh, anyway that's my progress on the Enterprise D so far. Uh, a lot to do and uh, I'm not too organized right now but I certainly have stuff to pick from tonight. Anyway, uh, I'll end this update with that and uh, go ahead and upload it so you guys can watch it and hope uh, you guys get some useful tips out of it. See you later.